Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we'll continue with our anatomy book club uh, with Dr. Ashenga. She'll continue the uh, neck imaging and she can start. Good morning everyone. Uh, I will uh, talk about the thyroid gland. It is derived from the first and second pharyngeal pouch and it is consists of the two lateral lobe joined in the midline by the isthmus and, uh, and lie anterior and lateral to the trachea, the lobe are approximately 4 cm in the height and extend from the thyroid cartilage to of the trachea superiorly to the sixth trachea ring inferiorly. Describe it as having upper and lower pole. The, uh, the, lobe, uh, the lobes are asymmetrical. The, the right lobe uh, is uh, larger, uh, most of the time is larger and most vascular. This is thyroid, the right and the left, and this is isthmus. And there is a small pro extension from the isthmus, superior extension from the isthmus, which is called uh, pharyngeal, uh, pyramidal uh, lobe. Pyramidal lobe. Lob. And if you notice here, it is not reaching the sixth tracheal cartilage. It's ending on the fourth. And I think it's this and not the accurate to say it reaches the sixth tracheal because it's very variable, extremely variable. Yes, from the four, from the four to the six. Well, it can be at uh, anywhere. I've seen below six, above six, uh, seen lateral, seen medial. Seen, uh, it's just variable according to the size. Yes, that's what's written in the Ryan text. The isthmus uh, across the second and fourth tracheal ring at the level of the C6. As this is what I mentioned, uh, pyramidal lobe are a continuation of the th uh, thyroglossal duct. duct. Anterior to the gland uh, are strap muscle of the neck uh, uh, and the sternocleidomastoid. Uh, superficially, uh, uh, the, and there is the layer superficially, uh, and, and anterior jugular vein is superficial. There is anterior jugular vein in the midline, and lateral to it, there is external jugular vein. Pharyngeal uh, para, uh, parathyroid gland are uh, deep to the posterior, posteriorly to the gland. This is uh, this is anterior jugular vein, and this is posterior jugular vein. Uh, external jugular vein. This is internal jugular internal jugular vein. This is carotid sheet, uh, uh, external car internal carotid artery, and common this carotid artery. common carotid artery, and this is vagus nerve. The posterior to it there is a trachea and esophagus. Anterior to it is the uh, sternocleidomastoid and strap muscle. Uh, this is para. Uh, vertebral muscles. Cross-sectional anatomy of uh, thyroid gland, what is I mentioned? Just uh, I can add that the thyroid gland, uh, its height is 4 cm, while the, it is uh, depth is 2 cm, uh, width is 2 cm, and depth is 3 cm. Yes. Yeah. Blood supply of the thyroid gland is uh, supplied by the two and sometimes by three uh, vessels, uh, superior thyroid artery, which is a branch from sternal carotid artery, and inferior thyroid artery, which is a branch from the uh, subclavian artery, and thyroid immune. Branch from the thyroid cervical, which arises from the from subclavian. subclavian artery. And, uh, and there is a variable of three percentage. There is the third artery, which is called thyroid immune, may be uh, arise from the brachiocephalic or from the aortic arch. The vein, the same. This is uh, blood supply, superior thyroid artery, which is arise from the external carotid artery, and uh, uh, this is inferior thyroid uh, artery, which is arise from the uh, brachio. Thyrocervical thyro 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 trunk from uh, uh, from the uh, brachiocephalic artery. Subclavian, or sometimes from brachiocephalic, and the middle thyroid artery, thyroid emma. Where is the inferior thyroid artery? This is superior. This is inferior. No. Where is the inferior? Inferior. Yeah, this is the inferior. Yes. It arises from the thyroid cervical trunk, trunk, which is a branch of the subclavian. 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 Sub yes. So, listen. Subclavian gives thyroid cervical artery. Thyroid cervical artery gives inferior thyroid artery. Yes. 
Yes. And the superior thyroid artery arises from where? It's external. From thyroid. external carotid. Thyroid. And you have sometimes a third branch. This is called the thyroid the in the artery, Amen. which okay. might arise from brachiocephalic or from arch of aorta. From arch of aorta. Okay. Yes. yes. While the inferior, uh, while the venous drainage of the thyroid gland is uh, from the super, upper part is by superior thyroid art, uh, vein, which is uh, uh, drained into the internal jugular vein, and the middle uh, thyroid vein which is also drained into the inferior uh, internal jugular vein and inferior uh, thyroid vein, which is drained into the uh, brachiocephalic vein in the right, in, in both sides. And then into drain into the superior vena cava. We have uh, ectopic thyroid tissue. The thyroid uh, gland develops from the outpouching of the pharynx and descends into the neck, passing anterior to the thyroid, to the hyoid, and the trachea. Mal development may cause the thyroid tissue to be found anywhere along this uh, line, uh, from the base of the tongue to, the, uh, to its normal position. Sometimes descend down, uh, uh, less commonly, descend down inferiorly into the mediastinum and sometimes into the pericardium and myocardium. This is what I know. Pyramidal lobe. Continue uh, uh, is a remnant of the thyroglossal duct. Radiology of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland can be imaged by the ultrasound. By the cannot be uh, uh, imaged by the X-ray. But the most uh, and the most easiest one is the ultrasound. The ultrasound of the of the gland is uh, high frequency. Uh, used high frequency uh, linear linear probe. Uh, it is uh, homogeneous, uh, middle uh, eco ecogenic eco texture. Uh, the lobe, uh, this is isthmus, this is the uh, left lobe, and the lateral to it there is a carotid sheath. This is sternocleidomastoid, and this is. Uh, this is a strap muscle. So you do ultrasound for the neck or for the thyroid using? A linear probe. Linear probe. Yes. Why? High frequency. It's why? superficial. So why don't you use curvilinear? So okay, high frequency, what, what advantages gives us? More detail. Higher resolution. Higher resolution. Higher frequency means higher resolution. Yes. So why you don't use higher frequency linear transducer for liver imaging? Deep. So uh, it, it cannot go deep the curvilinear. Mm -hmm. When you increase the frequency, you increase the resolution, mm -hmm. you lose depth. Yes. When you decrease the frequency, you decrease resolution, you gain depth. Exactly. Okay? That is yes. so in any basic physics. Mm -hmm. Another uh, another source of imaging for the thyroid gland is nuclear uh, medicine. Uh, the isotope scan provides the function more uh, functional than the uh, anatomical uh, detail. Both lobe and the isthmus can be identified by the isot uh, by the isotope scanning. It is useful uh, to identify. Uh, it's most useful for identifying the ectopic thyroid tissue, which is most likely be in the base of the tongue, Refl uh, uh, or reflecting uh, reflecting its size of the de development using the technetium 99 or iodine labeled agent. See. Always be careful when you are imaging children uh, for looking for the thyroid, look for the base of the tongue, always, especially on CT scan, okay? <coughs> the thyroid gland is the only organ that is normally dense on non-contrasted CT. Dense, it is yes, dense yes, Because yes. it contains iodine. iodine. So do a non-contrast CT scan, you will see something dense somewhere between the tongue and the lower neck. This is the ectopic thyroid, ectopic okay? Thyroid. And especially in children, when you are imaging, you, you sometimes you might need to give anesthesia because the child is crying and moving and, mm -hmm. okay? The anesthetist should be careful that there might be an ectopic thyroid tissue at the base of the tongue that might cause the child to suffocate. So you should give him a warning that you are looking for ectopic thyroid tissue. CT may be used for the assist the gland in the axial plane. It shows the soft tissue, as uh, you mentioned, soft tissue. As you mentioned, the, uh, it showed the soft tissue of high attenuation because of the iodine content. Surrounding structure also can be imaged. 
Magnetic resonant imaging also can be used uh, uh, in the any plane uh, of high uh, signal intensity than the surrounding muscle on the T2 image. The use of the surface coil improve the detail. <coughs> now, shifting into parathyroid gland. Parathyroid gland, this uh, endocrine gland, are small uh, lentiform structure measuring approximately six millimeter in the length, uh, three to four millimeter in the transverse diameter, and one to two millimeter in AP diameter. They they usually four in number, but uh, any number for uh, from the two to six is possible. The gland posterior to the thyroid gland, uh, uh, it's posterior to the thyroid gland in 90% of the cases, and superior, gl superior glands lie in the posterior border of the middle lobe, while inferior glands are lie in the inferior border of the uh, uh, of the lower lobe. Middle lobe, middle third of middle the thyroid. Middle third of the thyroid, yes. So uh, you see the. Parathyroid at the mid part of the thyroid, not at the upper part, yes. at the mid. Yes. The superior one is at the mid, and the inferior one is at the In lower. The lower okay. Part, yes. This is usually, but yeah. it's very variable. Variable. Occasionally, the gland descend into the superior mediastinum uh, uh, with the isthmus, are not, uh, or sometimes it not descend at all, or it is, it may be found behind the esophagus or posterior mediastinum. This is in the middle part, uh, not in the upper part, mm -hmm. while the lower uh, inferior is in the lower uh, part of the thyroid gland. Most of the blood supply of the parathyroid gland derived from the inferior thyroid gland. Cross-sectional anatomy of the parathyroid gland are not seen radiologically. Uh, uh, but when it is enlarged, it can be seen by the ultrasound or by CT or by the uh, uh, Sub, uh, by isotope. Nuclear medicine study parathyroid uh, may be imaged using the subtra uh, subtraction technique. Both thyroid and parathyroid gland take uh, thallium 201, uh, uh, thallium chloride 201. Uh, the thyroid, but not parathyroid, take the technetium uh, uh, per technetate by comp computerized subtraction of the technetium, from, uh, technetium image from the thallium, it uh, show the parathyroid. So they give both thallium and technetium. Technetium. The technetium will be taken by the thyroid, while the thallium will be taken by both. both yes. You subtract <coughs> this from this, you are left with what? Parathyroid. parathyroid having what? Should be what? what? Thallium. Thallium yeah. and the parathyroid. Because yes. they subtract okay. Now shifting to the neck vessels, uh, the most common uh, neck vessels are carotid artery. The left common carotid artery ar uh, arise from the arch of the aorta in front of the trachea and pass across the uh, 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 pass across this to lie into the left side of the root of the neck. While right common carotid artery arise from the brachiocephalic trunk behind the right sternoclavi uh, sternoclavicular joint. From this point, the, uh, the vessels have the same. Same uh, course, uh, descend lateral to the trachea, uh, uh, accompanied by the internal jugular vein and lateral aspect of the, uh, uh, in the it is lateral aspect and the vagus nerve posterior to them, in the carotid sheet. This is uh, left common carotid artery and this is right common carotid artery. Okay. Right common. Common carotid artery bifurcate into internal and external. This is common carotid artery bifurcate into internal, uh, internal and external carotid artery. Internal carotid artery has no branch in the neck. While external carotid artery has a lot of branches. Uh, 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 give the branch to the superior thyroid artery and branch into a uh, lingual branch, facial branches, and uh, uh, superior, temp uh, superior temporal, mm -hmm. superficial. superficial temporal, occipital branch, and uh, post auricular branches. Mm -hmm. And maxillary branch. Ah, maxillary branch. The terminal branches are two. two. What are the superficial uh, temporal uh, and ophthalmic? Ophthalmic is a branch of the ACA. 
the terminal branches of the external carotid artery are superficial temporal artery and maxillary artery. Okay, and it gives a lot of branches. Okay, in the neck. Okay, while the internal carotid artery don't give any branches in the neck. So when you do a Doppler or any or even uh, yeah, normal ultrasound, the one that gives branches is the external. The one with no branches is the internal. Okay. Internal carotid artery terminates intracranially by dividing into anterior cerebral and yes. middle cerebral artery. Yes. Anatomical relation of the common carotid artery posteriorly there is uh, sympathetic trunk uh, and medially there is trachea and esophagus uh, with the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, at the higher level there is larynx and the pharynx and recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, medial to it there is thyroid gland anterior medially. Anteriorly there is artery or uh, Anteriorly uh, is covered uh, is covered by the sternoclavic uh, sternomastoid muscle and strap muscle. Uh, above the level of the cricoid cartilage, they covered by the skin and fascia. This is uh, a common carotid artery. While anatomical relation of internal carotid artery, posteriorly sympathetic trunk. Uh, medially, there is a lat uh, medially is lateral wall of the pharynx. Anterior laterally is covered by the uh, covered throughout the length of the sternomastoid muscle, and the styloid process and, uh, and muscles of the uh, uh, styloid uh, process and its muscle separate it from the external carotid artery in its upper part. The artery become anterior to the internal jugular vein at the base of the skull. Internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve pass through the jugular foramen to the cranium. Anatomical relation of external carotid artery, internal carotid artery is lateral. Is, la uh, is lateral while the medial to it is pharynx at the first, at the higher level, there is, uh, uh, is uh, internal carotid artery. Styloid process and it is muscle is uh, also in the higher level, is medial to it. Anterior. It will be sep the internal and external carotid arteries high in the neck are separated from each other by the styloid mus uh, process and, muscle. and the muscles attached to it, yes. like the stylohyoid uh, muscle and things like that. So the styloid and its muscles just comes between Separate, the internal yes. and external carotid arteries, yes. okay? Separating yes. them from each other. Yes. And uh, anterior laterally, uh, sternomastoid at the first, and uh, pass deep to, uh, the, to the posteri posterior, posterior belly of the digastric and styloid muscle before entering to the sub substance of the parotid gland. This is what I mentioned, branches of the uh, external carotid artery, ascending pharyngeal artery, uh, sub, uh, external carotid on the lateral wall of the pharynx, lingual artery anteriorly, uh, arise anteriorly to run in the medially, uh, upward and medially before curving downward and forward through, uh, toward the higher part. Facial artery, uh, this is vessels uh, arise from the anterior surface of the external carotid artery above the level of the hyoid one and uh, uh, pass upward deep to, uh, deep to the ramus of the mandible, grooving the posterior part of the submandibular gland and it then curve downward, downward under the ramus of the mandible, uh, hook around its uh, hook around it, supply the muscles and tissue of the face. Its, uh, its terminal branch is anastomosed with the uh, branches of the ophthalmic artery and it's also supply the submandibular gland and soft palate and tonsil. It's somewhat difficult to memorize all these relations. Occipital artery and postauricular artery, superficial temporal artery, uh, this is a terminal branch and maxillary artery also a terminal branch of uh, external carotid artery. So what are the important branches of the maxillary artery? First of all, you have the middle meningeal artery. It has. Mm -hmm. okay. Maxillary artery uh, has several important branches. Okay. The first part, 
are middle meningeal artery, enter the skull through the foramen spinosa. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this supply. is the primary source of epidural or extradural mm -hmm. hematoma. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Extra? Extra dural or epidural hematoma because comes it's from the middle meningeal it, Because it's supply the dural mm -hmm. and the bone and the cranium. So it is uh, as you said. Okay. Uh, and the second branch is access, uh, accessory meningeal artery. May arise from this part of uh, or from the middle meningeal artery and pass through the foramen or valley. This from the spinosum, while this from the foramen or valley to supply the dura mater and the bone. Inferior dental artery descend to the uh, to supply the structure of the lower jaw. The branches of the second part. This is all the branch of the first part. While the second part is our. Uh, branches of the temporalis uh, uh, and trigoid and masseter muscle. Branches of the third part are uh, superior dental artery and inferior uh, infraorbital artery, greater palatine artery, and uh, sphenopalatine artery. Radiology of the carotid vessels. Uh, it can be imaged by the ultrasound, common carotid artery, uh, and it is uh, bifurcation may be imaged using the high frequency probe, and the external carotid artery may be distinguished from the internal carotid artery by identification superior thyroid branches. This is common carotid, and this is internal carotid, and this is external carotid artery. Uh, another source of imaging is angiography. Uh, this is maybe uh, performed in the conventional manner or using digital sub, uh, digital system of the subtract, of uh, uh, subtracting the overlying bone. It is provide visual map of the uh, of the vessels in, uh, of the vessels that injected. The carotid vessel may be demonstrated by injection of the contrast through the catheter into the aortic arch or into the ca uh, common carotid artery. This is. Uh, arch of aorta. This, this is normal conventional angiogram or subtraction angiogram? Uh, this is. Uh, what do you think? Uh, this is subtraction. This is okay. one here. This question. Huh? Subtraction or conventional? This conventional. I'm asking Greek people now here. I think, or subtraction? I think it is a, 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 a subtraction. Why? Because the bone not uh, seen. Okay. What about the contrast? Contrast usually is white, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Contrast is white. Yeah. Why the contrast here is black? Black because uh, subtraction. Because subtraction. Yes. Okay. You yes. see contrast black. In subtracted images, images, while you see it what white in conventional images, yes. okay. <coughs> and the recent machines, almost all of them use DSA, digital subtraction, digital subtraction. Okay. Yes. You just there is there are no bones. You don't yes. see any bone here. Yes. It's yes. Subtracted. It is a fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy. But using angiography, in angiography okay. using fluoroscopy. Okay. It is a fluoroscopy. Come on. Yes. This is arch of our time. This is uh, left subclavian artery, and this is uh, left common carotid artery. This is uh, brachiocephalic, uh, and this is uh, right subclavian artery, mm -hmm. and this is uh, 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 right common carotid artery, mm -hmm. and this is uh, uh, internal. What's number five? Number five. Five? Vertebral, vertebral artery. So, we should be arising from where? Arising from the break, uh, from in the right side from the brachiocephalus. Uh, vertebral artery arises from. From. Uh, come normally. From vertebral. From a uh, subclavian artery. No. From subclavian artery. It's the it's a branch of the subclavian artery. Yes. The vertebral artery is a branch of the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery. artery. Lambda common, or lambda internal, or lambda external, or lambda aortic yes. branch. Yes. Some nor sometimes, sometimes. It arises like this from the brachiocephalic or even from arises from the aorta. Yes. It's just like an anatomical variant. Right. But yes. most, most usually it is subclavian. from the subclavian yeah. artery. And yes. that's why we yes. have what's called subclavian steel syndrome. Because the, sub the vertebral is arising from the subclavian. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Uh, this is a vertebral artery arising from the subclavian artery, yeah. and this is a, a, a right 
sub uh, right vertebral artery this is uh, uh, right common carotid artery this is internal carotid artery this is external carotid artery and this is superior how do you know that number 10 is uh, no branches this is uh, has no branch and branch are uh, superior thyroid arising from external carotid artery. Any one artery that has branches is not internal. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Musha, don't say. La medial, branches. If it is medial or lateral, doesn't matter. Branches. If it is bigger or smaller, doesn't matter. If it is longer or shorter, doesn't matter. Anything. Come to the doctor unit, you'll see medial internal, lateral, external, you see medial external, lateral internal, you see tortuosity, a lot of things. But always there are no branches from the internal and there are branches from the external. external so the yes. landmark, the differentiating factor is branches. are the branches. Yes, the superior uh, thyroid uh, artery, uh, this is uh, lingual, I think it's lingual. Mm -hmm. um, lingual and facial. Facial, uh, uh, this is I number nine know. is the facial no. or continuation what? this is a, a mm -hmm. superficial temporal superficial temporal and this is uh, occipital okay i think it's meningeal mm -hmm. yeah maxillary maxillary maybe no, maybe maxillary but, uh, this is yeah. lingual yeah. this is yeah. lingual yeah. by superficial yeah. temporal and maxillary yeah. exactly okay yes next CT and MRI, this, uh, the carotid vessel may be identified by both modality. The pathology in the neck uh, may be displaced or involve the, uh, or involve the, uh, the vessels and uh, symmetry between, uh, between the two sides should be uh, evident in normal cases. MRI and, uh, uh, has advantage of the being able to image the vessel in any plane and some, uh, without uh, contrast. Venous drainage of the neck, uh, of the head and the neck is facial vein, superficial temporal vein, uh, retromandibular vein. Facial uh, drain the facial structure, uh, while the uh, superficial temporal uh, uh, drain the skull. And retromandibular vein uh, descend through the parotid gland and uh, into uh, superficial. Uh, uh, deep to the facial nerve and superficial to the external jugular vein. So the retromandibular vein is formed and terminated within the parotid. Parotid, yes. The parotid through the facial nerve. Yeah, exactly. It divided into two anterior branches and posterior branches and uh, 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 join with the posterior uh, auricular uh, with the posterior auricular vein which is drain the posterior scalp or, uh, to form the external jugular vein. An internal jugular vein, it formed the jugular, uh, uh, it formed at the jugular foramen, where it is continuation to the sigmoid sinus. Internal jugular vein is formed at the jugular foramen, where it is, uh, as this I mentioned. It descends in the carotid sheet lateral to the uh, to it is uh, lateral to its artery, then pass inferiorly to behind the medial end of the clavicle, where it is joined by the subclavian vein to become the brachiocephalic vein, and it drain post uh, petrosal sinus fr uh, drain the petrosal sinus from within the cra uh, from uh, from, from within, the within the cranium as well as facial vein. It receives super, uh, superior middle thyroid vein, uh, as well as pharyngeal and lingual vein. Thyroid, uh, the thyroid uh, thoracic duct drain to the uh, junction of the left internal uh, jugular vein and the left subclavian vein, uh, uh, and the left subclavian vein. The right, and this is all so of the, the thoracic duct, which drains the lymph, it drains into the venous system, yes. where at the junction of the left internal jugular and left subclavian. Subclavian. Yeah, and left internal jugular, left subclavian, and thoracic duct, they join together to form the left brachiocephalic vein. Mm -hmm. Okay? While the right lymph duct, which drains what? Do you know? Right. Lymph duct drains what? Zyka. What does it drain? Right 
right upper limb and right, right hemithorax. Yes. And everything else is drained into the thoracic, uh, the duct. Okay? Yeah. Everything drains to the left, except right upper limb and yes. right yes. Yes. hemithorax. Yes. 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 The right side drains by separate duct, and all the rest drains into the, the thoracic duct. Okay? So, again, it, where, Jay, you start? Okay? And the right, where does it drain? Into the junction of the right internal jugular and the right subclavian vein. The same thing. Yes. Okay? These openings are variable and maybe also, uh, also be uh, into uh, either vein or maybe multiple openings. Jugular arch is U-shaped. Communica is U-shaped communication between the two anterior jugular vein above and uh, above the manubrium sternum. The vertebral vein extend, uh, exists from the transverse foramen of the C6 and run down forward to, to drain the posterior aspect of the brachiocephalic vein. Drain into. This is superior. Uh, uh, su uh, superior vena cava, and this is brachiocephalic uh, uh, in the both side, and this is uh, internal jugular vein. This is external uh, This is subclavian, and this external jugular vein, smaller yes. than the internal jugular vein, and this is vertebral vein, drain into it, and uh, this is internal mammary vein, drain into the subclavian. Radiology of the neck uh, of the vein in the neck, uh, head and neck, uh, identified by cross-sectional imaging such as ultrasound CT or MRI. Subclavian artery in the neck. Subclavian artery in the neck, uh, as we mentioned, the right subclavian artery arises from the bifurcation of the brachiocephalic uh, trunk behind the right sub uh, sternoclavicular joint, while the left. Uh, subclavian artery arise from the arch of the aorta at the level of the T3, T4 uh, disc space. Uh, it this, uh, it ascends in the left side, uh, left to the trachea. From this point, the both artery have similar courses. Scalenous anterior muscle divide it into three parts. Uh, uh, first, medial to it. Uh, middle uh, is uh, second part is uh, behind the stern, uh, scalenous anterior, while the third is past lateral bo lateral border of the scalenous anterior to form axillary artery. The first part. Branches of subclavian artery. Uh, vertebral artery, internal memory. Uh, uh, first part has three uh, branches: uh, vertebral artery, internal memory artery, uh, or thoracic artery, or thyroglos, uh, thyrocervical trunk, which is uh, arise close the medial border of the scalenous anterior to uh, trifurcate. Trifurcate almost and immediately. Yes, into inferior thyroid mm -hmm. and uh, uh, suprascapular. Yes, inferior thyroid and suprascapular uh, yeah. ascending cervical. Yes. While the middle, uh, uh, the second part has costo cervical artery. The third part has no branch. Uh, it uh, end, uh, uh, end into the axillary artery. This is. This is. Uh, what is this modality? This is uh, uh, angiogram. Angiogram, normal or subtractive? Uh, conventional. Conventional. Why you say conventional? White. The contrast is white, yes. first. And second, one. Bone appears. The bones are obvious. Yes. This is uh, 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 left subclavian artery. Mm -hmm. This is vertebral artery. Uh, first part, uh, give vertebral artery and uh, inferior th mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. memory mm -hmm. and inferior thyroid artery. No, thyrocervical no. trunk, which is give branch into inferior thyroid artery. While and the internal mammary artery, it's important here is that it's commonly used in cabbage, coronary artery bypass grafting. Mm -hmm. They just suture the artery to the heart and gives extra blood to the heart in mm -hmm. cases of MI and things like that. So it's very important, the inferior mammary artery. Yes. Okay? Okay. <coughs> 
this is the branch uh, parts of the subclavian artery. Radiology of the sub, uh, subclavian artery angiography uh, and the venography uh, uh, the subclavian vein are best demonstrated by the venography with the uh, injection or injection into one of the veins in the arm. Ultrasounds used uh, for uh, demonstration of the subclavian vessel may be imaged at least in a part but, uh, uh, in any part and the ultras uh, by ultrasound because of it is overlying bone and uh, adjacent lung uh, neither or uh, of which to transmit sound it is difficult yeah, and difficult to be uh, uh, imaged by the ultrasound because of the bone that is uh, covering it CT and MRI both modality CT and MRI bo uh, both modality used uh, intravenous contrast improve the visualization on CT. It is difficult to demonstrate more than a short segment of any uh, single uh, CT image. And MRI or MRA is superior in, the, uh, in this regard as the vessels can be imaged along their axis. Well, I differ. I don't think this is completely true because nowadays yeah. I can easily do an MIP or uh, angiography, CT, CT angiography, and I can subtract the bone and do whatever I like with CT scan and show the entire length of the of the subclavian. A little bit, not very. Okay. Brachial plexus. This uh, pl uh, this plexus of the nerve is formed by the five root derived from the anterior pri primary ramae of the C6, uh, C5 to T1. And this root lies between the anterior and middle scalenous muscle. This uh, unite to form three trunk uh, C5, uh, C5, C6 to upper part, C7 to the middle, uh, C7 middle part, and C8. Uh, two T1 in the lower part. Each trunk divide it to form three anterior and three posterior division. The anterior division supply the flexor uh, and posterior division supply the extensor, extensor division of the arm. The divisions uh, lie behind the clavicles. Three cords are formed in the axilla. Anterior division of the upper and the lower cord uh, form the lateral cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk form the medial cord. Posterior division of all three form posterior cord. I will explain it to you later. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yes, I will show you. No, don't worry. It's so easy. Yes. Radiology of the brachial plexus CT and MRI is the uh, intraumatic uh, pl or plexopathy. The brachial plexus is imaged by the CT or CT myelography in all other circumstances using the MRI. On MRI, the nerve is iso or hypo intense comp uh, compared to the muscle of uh, on T1 or T2 weighted yaman, while the T T1 is probably best as nerves are surrounded by the fat. This is this is external uh, sternocleidomastoid. <laughs> First of all, this is what T1, T2, T3, T4. Uh, this is uh, T2. T2. You said that MRI is the best. T1. T1. Using T1. T1. T1 yes. So T1. you show T2. Yes. Yeah. T1. 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 Yes. Okay. Because yes. Yeah. Where's the CSF? There's no CSF here. Uh, yeah, and fat, 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 fat is fat. fat exactly. This is vertebra. Uh, this Where is, is this is a number cerebral. two. Are the nerve roots surrounded Rest. by fat? Fat. Yes. Okay. This is sternocleidomastoid. Thank you very much. Good job. <coughs> and proper. Thank you. Thank you.